Justin, I'm on it for that introduction. Uh, but I hate to break it to you, touchdown NYC has zero reference to football. <laughs> but, but we'll get to that later. Uh, folks, I'm from Brooklyn, New York, born 1967. I had a dope childhood, dope meaning good. I was the fourth of six children, grew up in a building where I had family on every floor, starting with my great grandmother on the bottom. I had an affinity for learning from the start. With an academic scholarship from Boys and Girls High School and high hopes of playing professional basketball like everyone else in the hood, I went on to Georgia State University, a first in my family. But when my scholarship ended, my parents simply couldn't afford to send me back. But back in Brooklyn, things had changed. The guys I hung out with had material possessions, and in my mind, they had made it. I wanted that too. So I dove headlong into the criminal lifestyle without even considering the consequences, and that landed me in prison for the next 18 years. At Sing Sing, I pretty much focused on playing ball and smoking weed because really I did not want to deal with my reality. But the gentleman in the cell next to me had been watching me. His name was Cardell Blood Shared. And his mentorship would forever change the course of my life. One day he propositioned me. He said, hey man, listen, if you come with me to class tonight, I'll cook you some Jack Mac. Now, I know you beautiful folk don't know what Jack Mac is, but trust me, it's a prison delicacy. So, so, so that night I headed to the classroom. The chairs were old and wooden and kind of squeaked every time you moved. The room had a smell that reminded me of a basement or a shed. I took a seat in the back and watched as the classroom slowly began to pack with all the guys who I had considered leaders of the jail. I remember saying to myself, Cardell brought me to a gang meeting. He must be trying to recruit me. But then Cardell started teaching in a way that made me forget he was a prisoner. He challenged us to think about generative factors of crime. Were we victims or did we engage in that behavior? He taught us accountability. He drew parallels between the civil rights movement and what was happening in prisons that day. He reminded me that I was better than that situation that I was in, that, that I was a son a father, a man, who just so happened to be in prison. I went back to my cell that night. I put a, took a sheet off my bed and put it on the bars as folks do when they want a little privacy. And I cried. I was really messed up that night. Cardell's teaching made me confront myself in the reality and it shook me to the core. So that night, that night I decided that some changes needed to be made. Cardell passed me that bowl of Jack Mac in a book entitled From Superman to Man by J.A. Rogers. I devoured all of it, memorizing whole sections just to impress them. When he asked did I finish, I said, yep. Yeah. He simply took the book, gave me another, and left. So I said, okay, I understand. That means stay ready so you don't have to get ready. When Cardell got transferred, I was heartbroken. I later learned that he died of a brain aneurysm in prison. About that same time, my mother passed too. Yeah. So that was, one of the, that was one of the darker periods of my life. That was my place of rock bottom. It was there that I had to decide if I was gonna stand up and continue my journey towards self-actualization or live in that dark place. I dug deep into Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning. In Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, Viktor states that anyone who has a why to live can deal with almost any how. Anyone who has a why to live can deal with almost any how. Meanwhile, enrollment in the class Cardell taught had slipped. I knew that if somebody didn't teach that class that we would lose it. I was scared to death, but I knew I had to try it. After my first class, some of the brothers said, man, it was just like Cardell Bloodshed was here. Listen, I was so motivated by their response, I taught for the duration of my prison sentence, earning two degrees from Mercy College, another degree from Genesee, a master's from New York Theological Seminary, then another degree from Bard College. I... I 
I became known as a mentor in every prison I went to. Academics actually became my protection. I was either creating programs or adding to existing ones in every prison I went to. In 2004, after serving 18 years, I was released, a day after my son was born. My joy, thank you, my joy quickly gave way to frustration. I had all these degrees but could not get a job. I was broke, lonely, and aimless. I was lonely as hell. You know, I actually started craving those relationships, those social ties I had that I was in prison because those were the things that were sustaining me. One day, my sister gave me a flyer for a company that provided employment for people who'd served time. The woman teaching this program name was Patricia. I don't know what she saw in me, but when it came time out to go get a job for the two weeks I was in the class, she was like, no, no, no. You, you're staying here. They're going to go out there, but you stay in here. And I was like, no, 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 no. Please. I felt like an imposter. Number one, I had never had a job in my life. And here it is, this lady telling me I'm going to sit right here and work with her with all these beautiful people. I was like, no. I tried to sabotage it. But Patricia would have none of it. She just trusted me, believed in me, and provided a pathway to, to success. And for me, that was transformative. She reminded me so much of what Cardell saw in me. That was 17 years ago. I've been working diligently to reform our criminal justice system ever since. I am one of the folks from the Brooklyn Community Bail Fund, and I had the privilege of collaborating with allies here in New York and around the country for systems change. But I kept seeing gaps in the ecosystem. We were bailing people out, but then what? People had needs that exceeded bail. New York has a robust supportive service system for people exiting jails and prisons, yet so many people fail. And, and it's not because of lack of services, but because of lack of social ties. There is no individualized support to help people get back on their feet. About five months ago into the pandemic, I learned about Robin Hood's Blue Ridge Labs and Catalyst program. Initially, to be very transparent, I had an aversion to Robin Hood. I thought it was too white and too focused on technology. Basically not for me. I applied anyway and got in. <laughs> and, and the money was good, so I said, I'll go. The next thing I knew, the Catalyst cohort members started talking about education and social justice principles. I said, hold on. Like, there was no pretense. The Blue Ridge Labs team, Ali, who's here in attendance today, always just showed up with intentionality, seriousness, and genuine passion. They just cared about the work I had to show up to. That's where Touchdown NYC was born. So here's the thing with our name. When you've been on the inside and you recognize someone on the outside, one doesn't ask, when did you get out? One asks, when did you touch down? That framing creates a community with the speed of trust. When did you touch down? We understand that most reentry organizations don't have the capacity to provide individualized mentorship. I understand that. But at Touchdown NYC, that's all we do. We pair mentors who themselves has touched down with newly released people. We support them through unforeseen challenges that get in the way of individuals showing up and succeeding. We provide belonging, safety, community, so nobody feels the way I felt when I got out. Before I close, it would be remiss of me not to acknowledge my co-founders who are not here today and the Blue Ridge Labs team. Without their support and their belief in what we were doing, like this just couldn't be possible. To my son Deontay, who was here with me this morning, a day old when I touched down in 2004. He's an A student graduating this year. I'm so proud of this boy. And I'll be with him when we cross our next academic milestone. To Melissa, to Desire, to Patricia, and the they are the anchors who have kept me grounded. To them, I say we have miles to go before we sleep. To my fellow touchdown mentors who are in attendance, Dex and Iris, you know what it takes to rebuild a life, and I'm honored to be on this journey with you. As Coretta Scott King said, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. 
In closing, when I was in prison, someone asked me, and Cozy, what does hope look like? Now that I'm out of prison, hope looks like someone feeding the poor, clothing, the, uh, clothing those who need clothes, sheltering the homeless. Hope to me looks a lot like Robin Hood these days. It looks like touchdown NYC. Hope is providing the basic human needs, the basic human connections, so that everyone has the support they need to thrive. I hope to be able to share the progress that we'll be making in the upcoming years, the upcoming months. Thank you so much for allowing me the space to share. You've been a wonderful audience. And once again, it is dope being up here. Thank